All right, what's up, you guys? Matty Preworky is already in here. What's up, bro? I think you've got to be the first person in here for sure. Uh, wait for this thing to go live on my computer. There it is. All right, cool. All right, what's up, guys? Pokey Grind, what's up, bro? Derek Heron, what's up, man? SSJ Miller, Anthony Kiewitzkowski. Anthony, I swear, you never miss a stream, bro. So tonight, instead of Evolutions, we're going to be opening up all three booster boxes, essentially, of the Japanese Chilling Rain. Uh, Match with Fighters is a little bit of both. It's got a little bit of... Um, battle styles in there, but then you've got the Silver Lance and the Jet Black Spirit, so I think this will be cool. So I was going to open Evolutions tonight, but it got shipped to my other house, unfortunately. I was expecting it to arrive today at this house where I do the streams, but it went to the other house. So this is what I've got here, so this is what I'm going to open, so we're going to push the Evolution stream to tomorrow. No new updates on the fake Evo situation, Brad. Unfortunately, no new updates. I am curious to see what's going to happen with that. But for now, nothing new. Hawk Red, thank you, bro. Tom Riddle, this will be more fun. Yeah, it might be. It might be. I'm really excited, guys. I've got a, uh, I got an email today from BGS. Um, and I did, I got to admit, I took a sneak peek at some of the grades. And I think there's some really exciting stuff in that submission that I was really surprised by. Here, I'll show you guys this one thing. I, sh I showed Kobe this. If Kobe stops by, he knows what I'm talking about. But I couldn't help but look at the BGS submission. I'll try to crop out the name of the card on this. Yeah, here's what I'll do. I'll take a screenshot of this. So there was one card in particular. I'm going to save it for an unboxing video because they shipped it to me already. So it should be here either tomorrow or Monday because they FedExed overnighted it. So who knows how long it's going to take. Let me crop out the name, though, because I want to show you guys this, the name of the card. All right. Oop, got to crop this out, too. So basically, I've had this express order. I've got a bunch of bulk with, uh, with Beckett, and I've also got um, – so I've, I think I've got Standard, which is like their seven-month, and then I had this express. So the express – I sent in, and it arrived April 20th, and I hadn't heard anything. It hadn't been added to my order history, so I called yesterday, and I said, hey, I haven't heard anything about my order, whatever. Can you guys tell me that you received it? They said, yeah, give us some time. So they called me today, and they said, yeah, we found your order. We graded it. We're done with it, and we're overnighting it to you. Um, so I guess they lost it, and then they just graded it real quick and sent it over. But check this out. So here is, here's the details on this card. I'm not telling you which card it is. But check out, just pay close attention to what jumps out to you about these grades. It's a rare card. It's over 20 years old. I'll give you guys those two hints. But look at these. So the grade is a 9.5. Total graded cards in the pop report, none. Cards graded above this grade, none. So this is the highest grade that has ever been graded at BGS of this particular card. And it's a really good one of this particular card. And it's a really good one. A really good one. So you guys have that to look forward to. Hopefully Monday we'll have that video. So we'll do the unboxing of the... Uh, I've got a bunch of orders, guys, but I guess that's going to be the first one to come. I sent the PSA Express order. It's got to have been back in January now, and I haven't heard anything about that. So there's that. Rich Piano rookie card. All right. Let's go ahead and open these boxes. But just so you guys know, we do have that to look forward to. So whenever we get this BGS submission back, it's going to be sweet. So we're going to start. I think we're going to start with Matchless. Then we'll get to the other two towards the end because we haven't opened these two yet. So let me move these back here.
I'll give you a hint. It's one of my favorite Pokemon. But yeah, it's, it's going to be sick. That submission, I think, was 16 total cards. All right. Let's get into this here. I guess it does feel kind of good to change things up a little bit, do something a little bit different. The General of Determination says, I hope everyone's having a determined and motivating Friday night. Ashton Wilson says he made it. What's up, bro? Hopefully we can get Zach and Chris in here at some point. I got my scissors this time because you guys know these. Were you happy with the submission in general? Yeah, I was very happy with it. Um, there was more than one 9.5, which was good. There were two cards that, two cards out of the 16 really disappointed me. And those two cards, uh, one of them got a 5.5, which was awful. And the other one got a 6. The 6 I kind of expected because that card, it's just, I don't know. That card wasn't pack fresh. The 5.5 was pack fresh. No 10s. Not a single 10. It was mostly 9s. Actually, the majority of them were 9.5s. Yeah, it was mostly 9.5s, now that I'm thinking about it. And then a couple 9s, and then a 6 and a 5.5. But the 5.5 was rough. I don't know where that came from. Um, but that was a pack fresh card, so that was weird. All right, what's the what was the pack trick on these? I already forget. What's the card trick here? Is it one? I feel like it was only like one. I guess we'll find out. Sharpedo. Cub Fu, uh, Lantern, Deli Bird, and a, what's the name of this guy, Gigalith? But yeah, dude, no 10s, it was rough. I don't know how, isn't it a lot harder to get a Beckett 10 than it is to get a PSA 10, though? Isn't a Beckett 10, like, much more highly sought after, and then a Beckett 9.5 is, like, technically a PSA 10? Isn't it something like that? I did a three-card submission to CGC and got one pristine 10. Jeez. See, for me, though, some people, like... Gr like, they, they eyeball grade them before they send them in. They only send cards that they think will get high grades. I only send cards that I really like. So I send a lot of Charizards. I send pretty much any Charizard to get graded, whether it looks like it's going to be a 10 or not. So regardless of the condition, I'm sending in Zards. For a Mew, the 9.5, no, it's neither of those. It's better than that. CGC and Beckett are similar in grading. Yeah, CGC, I heard, is like damn near impossible to get a 10. Swoobat, I think Swoobat. Cub Fu. Hex Heracross. Uh, Woobat? Am I completely making this up, or is that the name of this guy? And a trainer. Yeah, Black Label Beckett is harder to get than a PSA 10. And don't some people make the argument that a 9.5 is a PSA 10 equivalent because the PSA 10 is so inconsistent? I got one on a Japanese VMAX shiny Zard. Well, it was Japanese, so that's why. Japanese cards get much higher grades. None. Of, the card that I sent wasn't a Japanese card, by the way. I'll give you guys another hint. It was from the Topps booster box that we opened the other night. Am I even doing this right? Is the pack trick one card? Tentacruel Braviary. Uh, Venipede, I, I want to say. Uh, what's this guy's name? Chin Chow. And some kind of flute. Woobat. I know better than to send American cards. It's an American card. It's not Japanese. Um, half of my submission was Yu-Gi-Oh. This one was a Pokemon card, though. The 9.5 was a Pokemon card. The one of the one of the sixes was a Yu-Gi-Oh card. I'll tell you guys that one. I don't want to ruin it. 
I don't want to ruin it. We'll save it for the video. I told myself I wasn't going to look at the grades and they emailed me. They literally, I didn't know they did this. They emailed me like a literal sheet that just had all the grades on it. Like I opened the email and it was just all the name of the cards and then all the final grades. I couldn't help but look at it. Passimian. And there we go. I think this is Urshifu Rapid Strike, right? Which grader did you send it into? These ones were Beckett that I'm talking about. I've sent in, so I've sent in, I was trying to see who would send it back the quickest. So I've sent in an express order to CGC, an express order to PSA, and an express order to Beckett. And it looks like Beckett is going to get back to me the quickest, um, even though I sent in the PSA the earliest. And then I also sent in a box submission with PSA, a box submission with Beckett, and a box submission um, with uh, CGC. So CGC, I think, was about 70 cards bulk, 10 cards express. P uh, Beckett was 16 cards express, and I think close to 200 cards bulk. And with PSA right now, honestly, I've got like, it's got to be 500 cards in my bulk and maybe 20 cards in the express. You got the tops Zard graded. I'm putting my call in. Interesting guess. For Beckett, what's the total turnaround time going to be? I think their Express is bumped up now to like 30 days. I think when I filled out my Express form, it was 15 to 20, but now I think it says 20 to 30, which probably means you're looking at over a month. Uh, I forget the name of this guy. Braviary. Uh, Heracross. Scraggy. And a Drizzile. How are Beckett's prices? Fair or pricey? I think they're kind of pricey. Um, I do think considering the turnaround time, it's fair. They've got, so far, the fastest turnaround time. I sent my submission to uh, Beckett and CGC right around the same time. And Beckett is still getting back to me faster than CGC, even though I had to call Beckett. But then again, PSA. PSA is supposed to be like the crown jewel of all of them. And I sent my order into PSA like the first weekend of January, Express. And at the time, PSA was advertising Express to take no more than a month. I think they might have even been advertising it to be a couple of weeks. And here we are. So January, um, February, March, April, May, five months, and my Express order still isn't back. Oh, yeah, CGC is really cheap. When I sent my order in with CGC, it was what... Um, I had a membership, and my CGC order was like $8.10 per card or something like that. Crazy cheap. I still have yet to send any cards to grade, says Matty Priorki. I don't blame you, bro. I mean, it's it's super expensive, and it's super, like... If you don't want to sit on that money for that long, I mean, if you tie up your money in grading cards, a lot of people can't afford to spend, like in that case, I sent 16 graded cards. That was over $2,000 for the express order with uh, BGS. So to grade 16 cards express with BGS, you're looking at over two grand. If you're looking to flip those cards, you can't be sitting on two grand worth of grading for two months. I mean, it's crazy. Especially with PSA, I think that would cost you around the same, if not more. Rog and Rolla, Deli Bird, Lantern, and that one weird guy that you get when you get the, expen the expansion pass. He takes you to the Isle of Armor. I forget what his name is. I haven't sent in either, but I've got quite a few that I could. Adone is here. What's up, bro? You didn't really miss much. I was just telling the chat. We've got a really good email from BGS. My express order is done. It should be here tomorrow or Monday. And I, I took a peek at some of the grades, and there's some really, really fire grades in there. My wrench powers are gone. Oh, you know what? I was just going to say, how did that happen? I know exactly how it happened, bro. I know exactly how it happened. Chris did it. So here's the deal. When we were streaming the other night... um. I wasn't sitting at my computer like I usually am. So when we were streaming the other night, I wasn't at my computer. I was sitting at the desk with just the camera in front of me 
Chris and Zach took turns on the computer looking at the chat. So they, for that period of time, they had control over the chat from my account, not from theirs. They had control as Nick Strength and Pokemon. So Chris must have took... I didn't even notice that, bro. Here, I'm about to give you a wrench back, though, to be honest. I don't care if you have your wrench or not, bro. Bro, he... Oh, shit, I'm not logged in as Nick Strength and Pokemon. Hold on, let me switch accounts. I'm logged in as Nick Strength and Power. Let's see... Doge is looking really good, Jesslyn. Doge is looking really good. I was hoping for another big pump tonight, but so far I haven't seen anything. It looks like it's hovering around the mid-50s, right? Um, ad moderator. I got you, Adone. Yeah, man. Chris Chris got you with that little sneak remove. Oh, yeah, Steven. I forgot to respond to your DM. I saw it. You want to buy that Entei GX. Make me an offer, bro. Whatever you think is fair. I got to look back through the cards, to be honest, to find it. I need to look back through and see what I got out of there. Greg BP, what's up, bro? Chris is a psycho. It's always good to have Greg in the chat. Some big whales bought in, big spikes. What's Doge at right now, Jocelyn? All I know is all day I've been above my average. So my average buy-in was around $0.54, cents, and I've been above it pretty much all day. Weedle, Slurpuff. And, okay, another uh, single strike Urshifu. Um, Unbox Collector says, Sup, Nick. Steven from Tampa says, I'm assuming it's in somewhat good condition. Uh, if you give me, like, a few minutes after we get through another couple packs, I'll look for it. I don't remember where I put the, uh, the Entei card. But I'll bring it over here for the stream and show you uh, the condition of it. What set is this? This one is Matchless Fighters, and then we're going to do the Jet Black and then the uh, Silver Lance, the Chilling Rain kind of preview sets. I think that'll be fun. All right, Scrafty, Sobble. Diglett, shout out to Chris, who everyone's shit-talking. I forget the name of this guy. And a Hatterene, I believe. Team Adone, hashtag Team Adone, says Greg. All right. So, so far, I'm not getting a whole lot of anything out of this. No full art yet. That's what we're looking for. Some full art legendaries. I think we already got the Mall Trace and the Zapdos. Cool sauces. Ayo, Nick, what's up? What's up, bro? I appreciate everybody tuning in to the non evolution stream. It's been a long time since we've had a Friday where we didn't open evolutions. Some trainer, another Diglett. Shout out to Chris. A. Uh, Zigzagoon? Or no, Zangoose? Is that the name of this? Um, Petalil, I think is the name of this one. And a Kakuna. Japanese typically doesn't have as many cards per pack. Hopefully we get some good stuff, though, because I do want to send some Japanese cards to BGS. I think that would be cool. I am sending a Japanese Zard to BGS in my next submission. I'll show you guys that stuff, too. I've got a whole... I brought home a box of stuff that I want to send to BGS now that I know that I got these good grades on my last order. Oh, man. I think I just snipped the top of these cards. Hopefully, we don't have a hitter in here. Oh, we did. Look at that. I definitely got that one. I don't think I got the other ones. I think I only got this card. I think the other ones might be good. <laughs> What's this guy? Okay. Okay, we can deal with that. We can deal with that. Lily Pup, Slurpuff, Weedle, and a Galarian Surfetched, I think. Yeah, Surfetched. Kind of hard to see his little shield back there. Non hollow, though. Party foul. Take a shot. 
That's why I don't ever like using the scissors. Scissors are always like a last resort thing. I just sent a Japanese secret rare Zard to BGS, says Steven. So far, I don't see Chris or Zach in the chat yet. I'm going to try not to cut the tops off of these cards. All right. Trainer, Volcarona, Galarian, Farfetch'd, Rufflet, Rowlet, Rufflet, I think it's Rufflet. Ooh, and a Dracozote, Arctozolt. I want to say Arctozolt. I always get these confused. There's like three different fossil Pokemon from Sword and Shield. I never remember the names. I want to send my shiny Zard VMAX to BGS, but I'm in Canada, says Greg. Which one is this? Do you guys know? I think I want to say Arctozolt. Arctozolt is my final guess. Elon Muck, how's everyone doing? We're doing good, bro. I like the username. Drakezolt. Man, I thought it... Arctozolt must be the one with the fish face. I think. Hey, Nick, how are you doing? Just got on anything good? Zeus! Zeus, I think... Didn't Zeus win the last giveaway? Hold on, let me check. Zeus, we've been waiting for you, bro. Hold on, let me make sure. I took a screenshot of it. I think Zeus won the last giveaway, and we haven't seen him on a stream yet. Ah, oh, Zeusy. Zeusy, boy. You did win the last giveaway. So is this the first stream that you've caught? Zeus 310, bro. You won the last giveaway, which I'll have to look at the date on which giveaway that was now. Because this was... When did we pick this winner? Which stream did we pick this winner on? I guess it was... Was it last Friday? No, it wouldn't have been last Friday. Anyway, Zeus310, DM me on Instagram or message me. Um, email me. Get me your uh, mailing information, and I'll ship you that giveaway. Once I figure out which date it was, I got to look back now. Oh, cool. No, yeah, bro, no problem. I forget which, which stream it was now that we picked that winner on. We've done so many streams this week. Hey, Nick, I sent you a DM about some Pokemon cards you're selling. I have some Zards. Name is Luis. I'll have to look at it, bro. I don't remember seeing one with any Zards in it. I get messages all the time. People trying to sell me their Pokemon cards. I don't remember seeing one recently with Zards in it, so I'll have to look. Volcarona. I think it was the first stream you did this week. Which day was that? Was it Monday, I guess? Woobat, Petalil, and a rune. Is it called Rune Egregus? Yeah, Kobe is doing uh, dojo grading now. He's sending cards to. Uh, he's sending cards to BGS. Like if you pull a card on his channel, I guess you can send cards to him too. But if you buy a card, buy a pack from Kobe, and you want to get that card graded, he's kind of the middleman. If you want to get that graded, I'm gonna be using him for the. Uh, some of the cards that I pulled on the last stream, I want to get those graded. So I'm just going to go straight through Kobe. And he seems to get his orders back a lot quicker than I get mine. I'll pay $12 for the empty and take a risk on condition. Yeah, bro, just message me. I'm going to try to find it before the stream is over and show it on the stream, though, so you can see the condition. Elon Muck saw Nick was live and had to jump in. It's only 8.30 here, so let's go all night. Canto Kitchen. What's up, bro? I like that username. I'm going to say either Rev TCC Royalty Gaming Trainer Trey. I've only been over at Island Grown once or twice. What was the question? Greg BP said... I'm trying to catch up. I've never heard of Island Grown, though. I'll have to check that out. TCC is the card economist, right? Oh, where Greg has seen him before. Okay, I was getting confused there. Jessalyn, I paid for standard for Mimazard. 
Ah, oh, I got you. So Viper. I think that's the first time I pulled this card out of Matchless Fighters. And there we go. My favorite card from this set. My favorite Pokemon of the legendary Pokemon from uh, the Chilling Rain expansion, or the Crown Tundra expansion. That Zapdos. Island Grown <laughs> is a little Asian guy from Hawaii. He does breaks on Twitch. <laughs> Why did you describe him like that, Jessel? Little Asian guy. Nice, though. Probably my favorite. The alt art is my favorite card from this set, but this is still my favorite Pokemon for this set. Jesslyn, you're too funny. There's Chris. There's the boy. I'm usually moving around until TCC starts, and I'm over there until like 4.30 a.m. Yeah, Card Economist, he, he streams super late. I feel like he starts at like 1 or 2 in the morning, and he goes until like 4 or 5. Jay Atara, what's up? He does vintage breaks. Bought a Japanese jungle pack from Royalty Pokemon and pulled a Gengar. I actually pulled my first CP6 Charizard on Royalty Gaming stream. I haven't been back there much. I like his channel, and I've had really good pulls with him. But I feel like I like the smaller channel vibes like Kobe's, uh, how the community's smaller and how they can interact more with the uh, people in the chat. Like, Royalty Gaming, he's great. I love his channel. I love, uh, I've had great pulls, like I said. But I feel like he opens really, really fast. Like, he speeds through those packs. And I feel like Kobe takes a little bit more time um, on each person's packs. That's kind of why I like Kobe. And that's why I hang out in Kobe streams a little bit more than anybody else. I like Kobe. I like uh, Cards and Cars. I like the smaller channels because they spend more time on each pack. I like the, it makes it a little bit more personal, you know? Chris says, I miss Tom Riddle. Tom Riddle's here, bro. Mr. just posted a Diglett video. I miss Nikhil. His channel. <laughs> TCC is so much fun. I'm always lurking. He is fun. His titles are really creative, too. I know there's some dude that's always trying to expose him for being a scammer. Uh, scammer. I don't know why my voice just cracked like that. There's always some guy commenting in all the chats called Scam Economist. I see it all the time. And all he does is hate on uh, TCC. Intilion. I'm not a huge fan of these. I, I guess these, they're not reverses, but these hollows I just really don't like. Matty Priorki is loyal. Hey, Nick, just sent you a, me a message and thanks for what you're doing. Yeah, no problem, bro. On Instagram, right? Nick Biddle with a four ninety nine flexing donation. Appreciate you, bro. Yeah, Zeus, I was wondering when you are going to stop by. I hadn't seen you. We'd done a couple streams since you won that giveaway, and I hadn't seen you lurking. So I was, who you got, Nick or Blessing? Between those two, I think Nick is definitely going to place higher than Blessing. Nick Biddle is always showing out, flexing. I want that Agatha and Slow King shout out Jay Taras as Chris. Something tells me Chris is turnt right now. Always here, too much pure can't sleep, got that rocket bomb flavor cracked. Trainer, Cub Fu, Carvana. Uh, Zangoose, I think. Oh, there we go. The Galarian Slow King. Very cool. Shout out to Jay Atara. Um, did you see Hunter's new video? Hunter Labrata? I have not. Nick Biddle likes the Pokey community because we're here for a good time, not a long time. Chris, what does that even mean, bro? Chris, is this the card you were just saying you liked? That Jack 3D pre worky Bridget says hi to Chris. 
Ben, was it on YouTube or Instagram? Hunter's video. If it's on YouTube, I definitely haven't seen it. <laughs> and Chris just timed out Bridget. Yeah, if it's on YouTube, I haven't seen it. I don't think I'm... Is it on, Le is it on the Labrata Nutrition page, or does Hunter have a personal YouTube? Oh, Labrata channel. Maybe I am subscribed then. Sleep well, King Nick, says Chris. Thanks for stopping by, Nick. I appreciate you. Always showing love in the chat. Ben Bastoys, where are the beats at? What pre worky you like? I like that Redcon one, uh, big noise. No stimulant. No caffeine. Yeah, it's always good to see Nick Biddle stop by. I think, is this called Rufflet or am I just tripping? I keep calling it Rufflet and a Scrafty. I got them if you need them, Chris. Owen Newland, what's up, bro? Jay, I'm a pretty cool guy, fun to be around, easy to want to stalk. I get it, I get it. I'm about to get back into making them. It's been some years. It says Ben Bastois. I don't know you made beats, bro. Got a free Total War rocket bomb. Got the light side, dark side pre worky for May 4th. Oh, yeah, I remember that promotion. I never tried that one, though. Chris says Nick Biddle's arm hurts from flexing so much. Nick, would you ever do another show and get his dice as your first one? Probably not. Probably not. Larvesta. And another Drake result, I believe. Guys, I'm getting excited for these other two boxes. We've opened, I think we've opened two or three boxes already of Matchless Fighters on this channel, but I've never opened either of these other two boxes, the Silver Lance or the Jet Black Spirit, um, on or off camera. So I'm kind of excited for that. Elon Muck, let's make it a joint effort. Nick J always be stalking me. <laughs> Chris, what are you talking about, bro? How do you even know this stuff? Ben has given beats to many of our favorite Pokey legends. Chris is more tapped in, it seems like, to the Pokemon community than me. And I got Chris in this. I showed Chris a Pokey Kobe stream a while ago, and that's what got Chris into Pokemon. And now he's like he's like die hard about it now. He knows everyone in the community. I don't know if oh, here we go. Shout out to Chris. Doug Trio. Once she experience, I saw this on the Card Economist channel yesterday. The title of his video: "Once she experiences the Doug Trio, she can't go back to the Diglet." Weedle, uh, I forget the name of that. Rufflet, and a, I forget this girl's name too, but we'll call her Trainer. Yeah, Nick. Anything good? Nothing good. Well, I can't say nothing good. We did get these two cards. I'd say these were really the only two hitters. Yeah, Ben, I'm always in need of some beats. I alternate between whether or not I want to use beats on my streams or not. One night I do, one night I don't. I need to start just picking a beat and going with that every time. A lot of those titles are born by stuff we stay, say on the stream. I was wondering how he comes up with such creative stuff. It's actually true, Nick. That's why I don't show my face, because Tom would recognize me through the window. Does Tom live in Wisconsin, too? Sharpedo. Forget this guy's name. Wubat. Tentacool. And a Thunderous. No, don't get beats. Get bows. They are the best. I think he's talking about, I think he's talking about like instrumentals, like not headphones. <laughs> Unless I'm completely tripping and Ben Bast always makes headphones. But I think he's talking about beats. Brooks Embry, my dude, how are you, brother? 
Brooks always stops by every stream. We appreciate Brooks on this channel for sure. You take one window, I'll take the other. I prefer the bathroom window, says Elon Muck. Minnesota repping. Agatha is waifu. What's up, Nick? What's up, Pokey Barn? Is this Megan or Zach this time? I do not make headphones. Sorry to disappoint. I wasn't even in the main lifting area. They still beat me up. I opened some packs at the gym today and got to jump. Oh, okay. Zach this time. My guy. Good to have you here, bro. Chris, why do you want to hear this Yu-Gi-Oh! Lo-Fi song so bad? If you really want it, I'll play it for you, bro. Give me a second. Is it just called Yu-Gi-Oh! Theme Lo-Fi? Yu-Gi-Oh! Lo-Fi Hip-Hop? Ah, oh, here it is. I got you, Chris. Even though we're opening up Pokemon cards. Yan Mask. Yan Mask, I think. Uh, Chin Chow and a... Is this the evolution of Slurpuff or is this Slurpuff? Look at this guy. Playing Yu-Gi-Oh! music while opening Pokemon will give you all non-hit packs. I don't think that's true. Chris said, yes, daddy, louder. Oh. Chris, you noticed that before I did. Was that Nikhil? I didn't even see him comment yet. Chris, we, we love you, bro. Chris is actually doing his moderator duties this time. I didn't even see him comment. I just saw uh, Akil was hidden by Chris for 300 seconds. What do you say? I totally didn't even catch that one. Giveaway today. No, we're going to save it for tomorrow. We're pushing back the Evolutions... Uh, we're pushing back the Evolutions opening till tomorrow because the Evolutions booster box was shipped to the wrong house. So we're going to do the big Evolutions giveaway with all those reverse hollows and stuff. We're going to pull that one or tomorrow night. He said hello and I said goodbye. <laughs> I don't know why I keep, I keep instinctively trying to open these with my hands. Mod status on it. I enjoy being a non-mod and being able to relax much more. Elon Muck, are you a mod on uh, Card Economist channel? Brooks, I appreciate that 99 cent glizzy, my brother. Galarian Sir fetched a diglet. Shout out to Chris. Look at those big brown eyes. Larvesta. Slurpuff, I think. And a Blaziken V. Have you pulled Agatha yet? Is Agatha in Matchless Fighters? I like I like girls with big brown eyes. How many packs do we have left? I feel like this has been a pretty cold box so far. Tom Merle says I can't be a mod because I say wild shit. Oh, Chris, I just understood your comment. These packs have got to be... They've got to have some heat in them. Seven packs left. These got to be hot. It's got to have something good in it. I guess we did get those, uh, how many Arctazolts did we get, or Drakeazolts, whatever the hell they are. Two of those. 
We gotta get like... Have we gotten any alternate arts at all so far? Give me Drake Azult and Slow King. Chris, all you're getting is Diglett, bro. Either Swoobat or Woobat. Diglett, shout out to Chris. Look at that brown eye, boy. MS with the good vibes all the time. Yeah, MS, bro, you're, you're a buzzkill, bro. Every stream, I feel like you're killing the vibe. But we do appreciate you because you stop by every single stream, so I gotta appreciate that. But bro, look at the glass half full sometimes. All right, I'm getting tired of this Yu-Gi-Oh music. Let's do uh, copyright free hip hop instrumentals. How about that? That's trash. What about this one? <laughs> Jesslyn, I love you. There's Meg the Gamer. Sorry I'm late. I feel like you say that every time you join the stream, Meg. Jesslyn does not play around. <laughs> Minecraft music. Galarian Farfetch'd, a Herdier, I think. Carvana. Oh, there we go, guys. I told you there was going to be some heat in these last packs. There's nothing hotter than a Galarian Maltrace. Nice. So we got two of the legendary birds. Can we get all three tonight? Not bad. I can't remember if I pulled this variation of uh, Mall Trace or not yet. Yeah, Jesslyn is definitely known for her... Uh, she's got a very unique mod style, and we like it. What should I talk about in therapy? Chris, why are you tripping tonight, bro? I feel like Chris is, he's got some weird vibes tonight. I'm about to check on Dogecoin real quick. Ooh, Doge is going down a little bit. She'll pop back up. Talk about the man in the... Oh, you're talking to Chris. We should get Coach Greg in the Pokemon. I think Greg is a little bit out of the age range. Isn't, isn't Greg Doucette like 50? Bro, Tyranitar is hiding from you. It, wait, is there a Tyranitar in Matchless Fighters or no? Yeah, Jesslyn, will, she'll shut that shit down. Jesslyn does not fuck around. Good, I was born in the dips, but in the dips, increase your coin. Buy the dips, you mean. Just bought some doge on the sink. Glad to see it went back up a bit. Yeah, I bought a bunch in the low 40s, but I'm done buying for now. We'll see how high it can go. I've really got, my target price for doge is 69 cents. That's what I'm holding out for. Angel Mendez, right on Friday with the squad. What's up, bro? Always appreciate Angel stopping by. Dogecoin is coming to Coinbase in a few weeks. You've also got the uh, possibility, I guess, of Tesla accepting Dogecoin in the future. Tesla just dropped Bitcoin because of their environmental concerns or whatever, which I think is kind of, uh, kind of ironic, but I think it could be good news for Doge. But think about it, bro. Coinbase, the Coinbase thing is going to happen in six to eight weeks. In my opinion, you got to have balls of steel to hold Doge for two months or more. Doge is definitely not, to me at least, it's not a long-term play. You got to, 
you got to be buying and selling it frequently. I, I sell my Doge like once a week and then I buy back in at a dip. To just hold it until the Coinbase thing, I think would you, it would take balls of steel. Meg the Gamer says hi again. Sorry, I got kicked out at first. What's up, Meg? Biden is watching gas prices go up. Yeah, I had half a tank, and I I put half a tank of gas in my uh, in my car today, and it cost me forty five dollars. Yeah, you're right, Justin. I guess it does depend when you bought in, but I I feel like most people bought in. I would say probably above thirty five cents. And keep in mind, not too long ago, thirty five cents was like the all time high. I think if you're like me and you've got an average of 54 cents, it would take some balls to hold on to that for two months. We'll see what happens, I guess. But I would, I would bet that most people holding right now are in well above 30 cents because if you think about it, it peaked out and then most of the real mainstream hype that Doge got was like after that that initial run that it went up to, like right before Doge Day or whatever, when that really big pump was. So I feel like most people got in like SNL and all this other stuff that's been on the mainstream news, and they probably got in after thirty cents. But if you're in before ten cents, you're fucking you're golden. I remember Kobe saying Doge will never go over eight cents. Hey Kobe. Kobe also predicted, I predicted it too, but Kobe predicted that Evolution's booster boxes would be $2,000 by March, and now they're going down to almost $700. So we were all wrong about a lot of stuff, to be honest. But Dub, welcome to the club, bro. Nick, which would be your top three sets to open live? If I could pick anything, regardless of price, obviously, first edition base set. Um, I would say I'd probably like to open Legendary Collection. I've never opened a single pack of Legendary Collection. I would love to open a booster box of Legendary Collection. And I would probably pick First Edition Team Rocket over Jungle or Fossil. So I would say if I had to pick three, why did I just do that? If I had to pick three, First Edition Base, First Edition Team Rocket, and I would say Legendary Collection because I think the Reverse Hollows are so cool in that set. Oh, guys, we got all three. Did it, bro, that's crazy. We just said this. We got all three Legendary Birds. And all three of them were not all arts. Yeah, I don't know what it is. I love the Team Rocket set. I love the Dark Charizard. I love the Dark Blastoise. I love the whole concept of having dark Pokemon. But sick, guys. We got all three. That's pretty cool. I know that Sky Ridge is really popular, but that just wasn't my era. Trying to wake up to stream games later. Elon Muck, how goes it? So there you guys go. We did get all three legendary birds looking beautiful. None of them are alternate arts. We got all three legendary birds in their original arts. So we do have one pack left, so we'll see what that gets us. As always, appreciate all you guys stopping by tonight. Don't go anywhere, though. We still got two booster boxes to open that I've never opened before. We got them right back there. And we're going to crack those bad boys tonight. You guys were born in 87? Jesus, guys. <laughs> Multiple of you were born in 87? I was born in 93. Should I sell my doge? What'd you get in at, Steven? I, what'd you say? I forget what you said you got in at.
I'm in at 54, and I am holding until at least 69. 69 is my magic number. Your average is, bro, no, hold, 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 hold. 39, bro, I would hold. Jay Ataro, you're born in 87? What the hell? Guys, 69's in the chat if we're back. Earth to the chat. Earth to the chat. I see some 69s. We're back. So I think the Wi-Fi actually just went out at my house. I had to, I tried to reconnect it to the Wi-Fi. My computer went offline. My phone went offline and the music stopped playing on my phone. So now I've got the stream running off of my Wi-Fi hotspot on my other iPhone. Quality is potato. Hold on. Let me turn off the music and see if that helps. So I'm going off the Wi-Fi hotspot right now. I think, I think there's like an internet outage. Let me know if the quality is good. But right now we're on, uh, hold on, let me see. Okay. Yeah, it's not going to work. Quality is shot. It's good. It's super blurry on my end. Good. So it's like I'm getting like 50-50 feedback. Some are saying it's good. Some are saying it's not. It's good now. Refresh. Looks great to me. It's good. It's good. All right, good. Good, 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 good. I'm happy to hear it. All right, guys, that was super weird. I think I think there's an internet outage in our area or something. I think we're back. Let me check my computer. Let me try to reconnect to the Wi-Fi on my computer and see if that works. All right, we're good on the computer now. Okay, I think we're back. I think we're 100% good. All right. I just want to make sure before we crack these other two booster box, I want to make sure that we're good and uh, we don't have any issues. Change your quality. So is everybody good? I just want to make sure everyone's 100% ready to go before we crack these boxes. You guys came back fast. It dropped down to like six viewers. And now we're back up to 38. I worked for Spectrum while I did. Internet outages are so common and sick, bro. I have Spectrum at this house, at my other house. Bro, Spectrum was so bad here. I get outages all the time. Luckily, I haven't had, this is like the first one that I've had during a stream, but I, I've had outages here all the time, uploading videos and stuff. Spectrum was terrible. So at my new house, I went with uh, Cincinnati Bell. All right, so we're gonna start with this jet black one just because it looks cooler. And then we'll get over to the, uh, Silver Lance, I believe it's called. Okay, good. Yeah, we're back. We got 40 people back now. All right. Yeah, it's good. It's not good now? I hope you have your own. Oh, you're talking about Spectrum. Okay, yeah. I think we're good. Chris, I'm not at the new house. I'm at the old house. There's no raccoons at this house. box is harder to crack. Wait, what am I missing in the chat? Jay Ataro is a mom? Is she really? So this opening is going to be kind of a treat for me because I've never, uh, I've never opened this before. I'm really not as familiar at all with the set list. I'm familiar with some of the hollows here. Rohan says, where do you get the Japanese booster boxes? I've been getting them off of eBay. I've gotten quite a few of them, actually, from uh, SM Pratt's 
eBay store. I know he's a pretty reputable guy to buy from, and he always has some good, uh, some good Japanese stuff on there. So I've been buying from him a lot. I've also got a pre-order on the way of the EV Heroes. I've got my pre-order in for the American, the English version of the uh, Chilling Rain. I love this guy. Lady Ba. Haunter. Okay, so there's some cool uh, OG common cards in here. You got Psyduck, you got... This one's got a weird name, doesn't it? Lady Ba and Haunter. I am curious to see what the... Uh, um, what's his name? Calyrex looks like on these cards. Chris is going crazy in the chat right now. All kinds of conspiracy theories. I got all my chilling rain using my bulk as trade-in. Bro, I need to find a place right somewhere around here that does trade-in booster boxes for bulk because I got so much bulk, bro. Yeah, Steven, I need to. I've got a crap load of bulk. Matty Prework, he says 5G causes testicular cancer. <laughs> All right, we got some kind of gloves. Is this one called Apon? I forget. A What's the name of this guy? Fletchling? Fletchender? Now I'm starting to forget the names. This one's Cutie Fly, though. We all know Cutie Fly. And a. Covid. Not see. Now I'm forgetting all the names. All right. C dot. Yeah, C dot. I was thinking. What was I? That's what I was thinking. A dot. A palm. What was I thinking? Full grip gains on. Oh, it's in Ohio. Bro, that is a hot tip. I'm in Ohio too. Hold on. I'm about to have to screenshot that chat. I'm going to check them out. $15 to ship 3500 Bro. Bet. Bro, that's perfect. I appreciate that tip. That is perfect. What part of Ohio? Trainer Mareep. Ah, uh, what's this? Is this is it cast form? I want to say cast form. Ghastly and a Golurk. Opening these Japanese sets is a real test of your uh, Pokemon knowledge. Target has buy one get one free on nicotine gums. Chris says. Are Jay and Tom Riddle having a falling out now? Because Jay doesn't want to do zombies. I've got I've got the 3500 card boxes, but I guess the 1800 probably would be easier to ship because the the boxes I've got are huge. Sneasel. I want to say Fletchling. I want to say Palpitoad. Ooh, nice Haunter. That big old tongue on that boy. Uh-oh, Kapil. For breakfast, I had bacon and a naked drink. Congratulations, Chris. Proud of you, bro. I love the backs of those cards, bro. Yeah, they do. I do like the new, ba the newer backs of the Japanese cards. 
Okay. <laughs> Thirty-five hundred will fit into a medium flat rate box for fifteen fifty. I wrapped in groups of five hundred in plastic wrap. That's a good tip. I need to order some more flat rate boxes. Nick, do you think Big Rami is a Snorlax right now during balking season? I don't know. Thwacky. Flaffy. The evolution of cast form, which I'm totally blanking on. That's a very interesting looking Clopapus. And a Weavile. Pizza Hut power deal is the play. Good until three. <laughs> I think Chris has been popping some pills tonight. Elon Muck, I appreciate it, bro. Yeah, I used to order a bunch of stuff from USPS when I was... Uh, I used to ship a lot more stuff on eBay. That was kind of my side hustle when I was working... Um, I was working a nine to five at a retail shop called Brookstone. I sold a lot of stuff on eBay back then and I was constantly ordering boxes from USPS. It's actually a pretty cool service that they ship you those boxes for free. Going to have to ask my wife to see the clobopus, says Daniel. Chris has been exposed 30 times and never got the virus. This pile of bulk is getting so loose. Nick, what is your favorite episode? Thanks for the $5 donation, by the way, Angel. He says, what is your favorite episode from the OG season? Mine was Lieutenant Surge's Raichu. My favorite one is the one with Charmander, where he's left out in the rain. The flame on his tail is about to go out. He was abandoned by his trainer. Ash and friends save him. That's my favorite and saddest episode of all time. I love that episode. No dice says, I want Big Rami to step on my grapes as hard as he can. We got some gloves. We got uh, Inke. Mareep. Um, man, what is this chameleon's name? I'm totally blanking on this one, too. And uh, not Verizian, but uh, Cobalion. Cobalion. One of the newer version of the legendary dog, or whatever these are supposed to be. Did you cry, bro? I came close. Steven from Tampa, imagine Jay Cutler heel slamming on your grapes. Bro, what are we talking about? Chris has been timed out by a moderator. <laughs> Chris is really pushing his luck here, isn't he? What time is it there, Nick? Here it is 10 a.m. in India. It is 12 a.m. here. And I got to get up early tomorrow. I got to get up at like 7.30, which sucks. I can't remember the last time I had to get up at 7.30 on a Saturday. Who you got in a fight to the death? Pikachu or Raichu? Well, you'd have to go with Raichu, right? Ah, uh, what's this guy's name? Man, now I'm blanking on so many of these names. And a wheezing, a really weird-looking wheezing. Do huge bodybuilders have to buy back scrubbers with the handle? They can't touch the center of their back. Chris says Nikhil made another account named Kapil. <laughs> Nuz, Nuz, isn't it Nuzleaf? Is it Nuzlet? I think it's Nuzleaf. Bro, if I see one more frog emoji in the chat, I swear. Tom Riddle says, I will have to take a piss test tomorrow. <laughs> I 
I want to smell one of Nick Walker's farts. <laughs> oh, nice, an Ampharos. Lady Ba. Oh, uh, what's, is this Crabominable? Cab Isn't that the name of this super hard to pronounce name? Crabominable? And some chick. I just poured a whiskey. It says no dice. Jared with another frog emoji in the chat. How much do you think Brock benched? I don't remember. Was Brock even swole? Chris, why do you keep hitting time out on that dude? I feel like you already timed him out. Do you have to do it like five more times? Thwacky. Cutie fly. Um, why am I blanking on all these names now? Grookey? Sneasel? Nick, what can you bench at the moment? I have no idea, bro. And this one is Dracofish, I think. Ah, uh, yes. My favorite Pokemon. Some chick. <laughs> Chris is pissing off all the other moderators right now. I don't know what, what Chris is doing right now. I feel like he's doing drugs. Ashton Wilson says night, night. If you're going to bed, good night, bro. Thanks for stopping by. Enjoying some late night Pokemon vibes. Gold Duck. Cutie Fly, Fletchling, Grookey. Me and Ben found a seal, found sealed dark promo Entes. We found like five of them. Yeah, for, when I first bought some uh, on eBay, I found the sealed promos for like ten dollars a piece. I mean, they're not, they're not crazy overpriced. I mean, I think you can get them for a pretty fair price. It's just a matter of you're taking the risk on the centering and stuff because you can't see what the card looks like behind that. Uh, it's got like a promo card in front of it. So it's kind of hard. If you want to get it graded, it's kind of hard to tell what kind of shape it's in other than you can you can kind of see the back of it. Spending a Friday night watching Nick open Pokemon cards is better than hanging out with my nagging wife. You're not making a very strong case for uh, getting married, bro. Audio Addictions is checking in. What's up, bro? Chris, what are you talking about? I don't even know what Hitman 3 is. Enjoy your Hitman, Chris. That's Jay. So, Jay, what did I miss in the chat? You have kids? Is that what they were saying? Rillaboom. Chris, bro, I don't want you to leave, but I also don't want you to spam. Be a good boy. Jesselin's back. Someone will pay a huge premium for the chance of a good ente. I agree, bro. I'd pay for one. What'd you guys? So what'd you guys pay? I think the last time I bought those promos, I paid like ten bucks a piece, maybe less. I feel like I might have got them for like seven ninety nine or something crazy like that. I like to do one of my favorite things to do on eBay is send lowball best offers. When something is like fifteen bucks, I love to send a best offer for like six or seven. And sometimes someone will accept that hail mary. And they'll give you a crazy good deal on some of these cards. Especially if you put an offer on multiple. Like if someone is selling 10 of those Entei cards and they're selling them for 15 bucks a piece, I'll put in an offer for seven, but I'll say I'll buy all of them. Alien Machine says, hey, nagging wife here. Nick, why would you mod my boyfriend? Wait, is the guy modded? I don't think the guy that left that comment is a mod. Oh, would you? No. He, she says, why would you mod my boyfriend? I don't think he's modded. <laughs> Chris is selling a... Uh, you guys, If you guys want to go bid on it, you can bid on it. 
Chris is selling that crazy off-center, terrible condition uh, reverse hollow Charizard that he pulled on the stream the other night. I think he – it was at 50 cents for the longest time at auction. I guess now it's at a dollar four. Bro, I'll bid on it if nobody – if nobody bids past a couple bucks, bro. Go lurk. I want. Is it Fletchender? I don't know why I'm thinking that. Um, Sableye. Zeb Strika. That's a very interesting artwork. Why is Zeb Strika out in the middle of a ice filled ocean? And some dude. What is the solution to buying trading cards at retail stores? You would think suppliers would have to come up with a fair way to everyone get some. I don't know, man. It's such a, it's such an interesting topic of conversation. I don't know what the solution is, to be honest. I think really the only solution is going to have to be for demand to go down. It would seem like the distributors and the printers and the retailers... It would seem like after all this time, they would have had time to catch up on on the demand, like make more product, make more um, heavier allocate products and make them more accessible. But it seems like they just can't keep up with demand. So I think the only solution is really for demand to go down because it seems like they can't do anything with a level demand. It seems like they can't increase the level of supply. So who knows? Here's some kind of scroll. Inky, that uh, chameleon thing, Nuzleaf, I think, and uh, what's this guy's name? Why am I forgetting all these names? I like this one, though. I'm sure the chat will save me on this one. Shiftry, there we go. How many Pokemon are there now? Almost 900. It's almost like a chore trying to remember all of them. Yep, that's a very good point, Stephen from Tampa. If they increase the supply, cards won't be as special. If they just start super mass printing everything to try to address the demand, it's also going to decrease the rarity of the cards. Some guy in my local Facebook posted a picture of him holding a full sheet of Shining Fates Charizards uncut from the factory. That's interesting. Gold Duck. Coughing. The evolution of Cutie Fly. The evolution of Cast Form. Nice! You guys know I love me some Celebi. It's a nice Celebi right here. Very nice. This... I might get this one graded. Yeah, I don't think there is any real solution to the problem. Like uh, like Tom just said, keep it how it is right now if they were smart. I would just wait for the demand to go down a little bit would be probably the only thing that would have any kind of impact. Chris, bro, what are you talking about? Judy Young, what's up, bro? He says, what did I miss? You haven't missed much from this second box, to be honest. Steven from Tampa says, I'm going to head to bed in like 30 minutes. Just DM me. Yeah, no problem, bro. The Entei card, right? Entei GX. I got you. Will Chilling Rain be a good investment? I think so. I think right now it's already overpriced, though. I mean, booster boxes right now on pre-order are going for, what, like 200 bucks right off the bat? Ampharos, Mareep, that Clobopus. I mean, that thing is ugly, but also so cute. It's such a weird-looking card. Yeah, Chris, we figured that out already, but Adone got his wrench back, bro. This bulk stuff is kind of confusing. Maybe I'm just a dumbass. What do you mean, bro? Have you seen the pre-orders for the Espeon VMAX? $300 to $400. The card from the EV Hero set? 
the big S the espion that's like on that building or whatever. Chris, we know. We figured it out, bro. Yeah, that Espeon card is sick, though. I mean, if you're an Evolutions fan, that's definitely a card that I would want to have. Brooks, are you confused about sending the bulk in exchange for a booster box? Talonflame? T is it Timpole? T it's something like a Tadpole. Zeb Strika. Chris says, okay, goodbye. Cast form. And we got the Calyrex riding the Shadow Horse, which I completely don't remember the name of. Nice. Greg is ready for Chris to get out of here. You just made Greg's day, Chris. Greg is like, so long. So long, Kermit. Let me get some more sleeves here. <laughs> I just realized your name is Elon Muck. <laughs> Chris, bro, you're trash. Chris, guess who, guess who just lost their wrench? I just dropped that ceremonial Chris removal of his wrench. Poor Chrissy. Chris, leave a comment, bro. Let's see that wrenchless name. <laughs> Chris knows I took it. He's not going to comment again now. <laughs> that frog emoji. Chris, you're just a peasant now, bro. <laughs> I was waiting to see who would be the one to time Chris out. <laughs> I was waiting for that. Greg's been waiting for this moment for months, bro. He said that felt so good. Yeah, Brooks, that's a good question. So my bulk, I do have a lot of reverses in there. I've got a lot of rares in there. There's probably even some hollows in there, but it's mostly commons and uncommons. Is it worth separating is a good question. Hashtag Team Nick. Appreciate you, Pokey Sly. That's a weird-looking artwork, too. This one's Crabrawler, I believe, and another Haunter. Got any hoops? I don't even know what that means. Like NBA cards? I heard that the 25th anniversary set in October isn't going to have any booster boxes. Do you know if that's true? Where'd you hear that from? That would be interesting. I mean, Evolutions was the 20th anniversary set, and they had a booster box. But then you had Generations, which also came out on the 20th anniversary, and they didn't have a booster box. So who knows? I, I hope they have a booster box, because if they don't, I feel like the price is going to be crazy, like on a per pack basis. If you can only get them from an ETB or from tins or whatever, I feel like the per pack price is going to be insane if you can't get them from a booster box. But I do think it would make whatever the big... Ooh, another Celebi. Nice. But I do think it would make whatever the big hitter card is a lot more rare if you gotta buy if you can't just buy a bunch of booster box and you gotta buy a crap load of ETBs or a crap load of tins or a crap load of single packs. That always makes it much harder to get whatever the chase card is. Cause if you buy two or three booster boxes, you're probably gonna get the best card in the set, but you could probably buy ten ETBs and you still might not get it. I love these Celebes though. 
Celebi always has some really nostalgic vibes for me, thinking back to the uh, Pokemon Crystal days. And was it Ilex Forest? Oh, he got Lil Nikhil. He got Chris's other account too. That was quick. I didn't even see what Lil Nikhil commented. Greg is not to be trifled with. Judy Young is saying, who's Chris? They've already forgotten who Chris is. How quickly they forget. Do you think Evolutions will get a reprint of Neo Era cards for the 25th anniversary? I would like to see them do that. At this point, I think it's anybody's guess what they're actually going to do. I would really like to see them do that, though. I'm waiting for Chris's five minutes to be up, and he's going to come back swinging. Yeah, I think Gym Challengers or Gym Heroes would be a good thing to reprint, but at the same time, I don't know if they would do that. Because while most of us really have like a, most of us watching this probably have a pretty nostalgic connection to those original gym leaders and those gym heroes and gym challengers cards. I feel like the gym leaders themselves are not as mass appealing as just the Pokemon from that generation. So I don't know. Like I could probably only name half the gym, half the original gym leaders off the top of my head. And another one of these Drake of Fish things. Hey, Nick, are you going to be doing any more Evo box opening soon? Yes, tomorrow. We are doing another Evo box break tomorrow. The only reason we didn't do one tonight is because it got shipped to the wrong house. I did two-day shipping on this box because I needed it today for the Friday Night Evolution stream, and I accidentally put in the, the wrong address, so it didn't come to the right house. Otherwise, we would be opening Evolutions right now, but we did get a nice change of pace with these Japanese cards, so I think that's uh, that's a plus. I'm actually enjoying these boxes because everything in these boxes are pretty much a surprise to me at this point. And Bridget always says, too, she's like, why do you always open Evolutions? She's like, you need to open something else. I'm like, because that's where the Charizard's at. And what do I want? I want that Charizard. Give me Neo or give me a bullet. <laughs> now that's dedication to Neo, bro. Did you get the box or a refund or is it lost forever? Actually, I think the guy did reply while I've been on stream, but I'm kind of scared to see what he said because I already left him negative feedback. I left him pretty scathing negative feedback. And then... He messaged me a day later, so probably after he saw the feedback. So he's probably not too happy with the feedback that I left him. But in my opinion, he deserved it. In my mind, he's a scammer. He listed a product that was fake. It was a counterfeit Evolutions box. He advertised it to be real. He priced it as if it was real. He knew what he was doing. And he didn't put anywhere in the description that it was a proxy or that it was fake. I guess I can read it live on the chat see what he said i know he sent me I, I think he actually sent me two messages while i was on live right now talon flame something tadpole palpitode and a uh what's the name of this one i gotta read it now right you guys want to see me read it let me know in the chat <laughs> you should read it. Is it considered doxing if I just show his username? I don't want to dox the guy, but I think when I click the message, it's going to show his username. Shift tree, Fletchling, Ghastly, Cast Forms Evolution, Trainer. I want to hear the review. No, because it doesn't say his real name. All right, we'll read it. 
I bet he's pissed. If the product don't get received back, I'll contact eBay. Wait, did he say something else? Oh, so he's, he sent me a refund. If product don't get received back, I sent your full refund back. Please send back item. Well, that's weird. Why? No, he, I don't think he did. I think he's lying. I didn't get a. I didn't get any notification from PayPal or eBay that I got a refund. The only notification that I got was a new message notification on eBay. So he's. I think he's lying. So he wants me to just send the product back, assuming that he refunded it and he didn't. So why is the case still open then? The return case is still open. Wouldn't it be closed if he? Estimated refund. Here's what happened. That's just saying what I paid for it, isn't it? That's not saying he actually gave me the refund. Yeah, there's no... Isn't there... Yeah, isn't there supposed to be a return label? So where's the return label at? Huh. I'll show you guys the feedback I left him though. Let me try to... Let me go to his page. Give me a second here. I don't know though because I only got... I guess maybe I'll wait and see. Trying to get to his page here. But yeah, I think it's a bit weird that I don't have a notification about the refund yet. What a clown. I wonder if he blocked me because it's like not letting me click on his page. You have a new message. Yeah, I mean, look, here's my notifications. There's no refund in the notifications at all. Oh, look, there I am on camera. I don't know. I'm kind of suspicious now. It's like not letting me click his page. Hold on. I'll try to search it this way. There we go. Oh, I, decim <laughs> I decimated this guy's feedback. 66.7. Who do you think did that? So he had 186 feedback, and it was all positive. But in the past 12 months, he's only had three. So he had two positive in the past 12 months which I probably should have looked at. All I looked at was the 186 and 100% positive. So let's see what that negative feedback says. <laughs> Scammer. Seller sold counterfeit boxes, advertised as authentic, refused to accept return or refund for the counterfeit product. Product is fake and does not contain Evolutions packs as advertised. They're Chinese knockoff fake Pokemon packs. Buyer beware. And the other ones just look like probably as a buyer. But yeah, screw that guy.
Alex the Baller says that has happened to me too. I guess we'll wait and see. I'll keep you guys updated if we get a if we actually get a refund. So far, I haven't gotten any notification of one. Oh, nice! A gold electrode. I'm 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 guessing this is a good one to get. Very nice. Again, another card I didn't even know was going to be in this set. And I guess it's shiny, too. That's a cool card. Yeah, I had no idea this was even in this set. Very cool. Very, very cool. How many packs we got left here? I feel like this box didn't start off that hot either. So we got eight packs left. We'll try our luck here. Maybe we'll get some hot packs towards the end like we did last time. Oh, Steven from Tampa, you're going to bed. Good night, bro. I'll message you about that Ente. As soon as I find it, I'll send you some pictures of it too. I'm pretty sure I already boxed up all the stuff um, that I got out of that collection, so I'll have to look through and find it. Some kind of energy card. I forget the name of that. Is this one Squovit? Inke? Nice! Metagross. Metagross, one of my all-time... This has got to be my top 10. One of my top 10 favorite Pokemon of all time. I love Metagross. Absolutely love this Pokemon. So what do you guys think? I should get this card graded? Oh, wow, this I, I love this card. Dan Pena, the B Drill King, is in the house. What's up, bro? Always a pleasure, Mr. Dan Pena. Always a pleasure. Your name will always be associated with B Drills. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but as long as your name's remembered, right? Definitely get it graded. Yeah, I'm going to be, after my Evolution's opening tomorrow, hopefully we get another OG Hollow's art out of there. And uh, after that opening, we'll send a bunch more cards to BGS. I think I've already got about 10 more Evolution Zards that need to be graded, so I might do like a Charizard-only Express submission with uh, BGS. No, PSA is still closed, bro. I, I was going to wait for them to reopen in July, but honestly, I'm so happy with the results of my BGS Express order. I, I'm going to keep going with BGS. Like, I'm I'm super hyped about the grades that I'm getting on this. I mean, I can't wait for you guys to see it. Granted, of the 16 cards that I sent to BGS, none of them came back a 10. But every single card that got a 9.5 is significantly over a thousand dollars in a 9.5 so they're they were really good 9.5s to get and i got quite a few 9.5s which i was really happy about i was i was really thrilled to see that email from uh from beckett and i was also really thrilled that they didn't lose my order well they did but they found it which is the important part But yeah, some of those 9.5s were big, big 9.5s to get. I'll probably live stream it when I get the box in the mail and we'll open them together. Octillery, or no, not Octillery. What's uh, Grappelocked? Grappelocked. Is 
So I think we had five Yu-Gi-Oh cards in that submission and 11 Pokemon cards. Is there any differences between the two graders? Is one trusted more? Um, there's a lot of differences. I would say BGS and PSA are probably a lot more comparable than PSA and CGC, for example. I, I would say they're a lot closer. But yeah, it's hard. It's hard to say. A lot of people say in some cases, or I guess in a lot of cases, uh, you can get actually more money for a 9.5 from Beckett than the same card in certain PSA 10s. Just because the PSA 10 seems to be so variant in what qualifies as a 10. I guess some would say that Beckett are they're stricter. And I think the subgrades is a big part of that. I think a lot of people... I think a lot of people actually really prefer the subgrade aspect of BGS. And if I, PSA doesn't do that, which I don't really understand why they don't. But I think a lot of people like the stricter grading from BGS, and they also like the uh, the subgrade. Because then, I mean, I don't know why PSA doesn't do it, because subgrades basically are there to tell you exactly why your card got the grade it got. Was it the corners? Was it the centering? Was it surface wear? What was the issue? That's basically what the subgrades tell you, and PSA doesn't do that. So I think it's a very useful element that BGS has. Some kind of scroll, some kind of heart, some kind of ghost. No, I'm just kidding, that's ghastly. And another Zeb Strika? Oh, wait, so which one is Zeb Strika? Is the Evolution before it Zeb Strika, or is this one Zeb Strika? So if you have a nice card with questionable centering, PSA is definitely the choice. But in my case, I would rather send Evolution's Charizards that look relatively good to Beckett because the difference between a PSA 9 Evolution's Charizard and a Beckett 9.5, the Beckett 9.5 is way more valuable than a PSA 9 Evolution's Charizard. PSA 9 Evolution's Charizard, probably 350, 400 bucks. The uh, BGS 9.5 Evolution's Charizard, around 1,000, a little over 1,000, maybe even 1,500. And you're a lot more likely to get a 9.5 than you are to get a 10 from PSA when it comes to evolutions. So if you've got a really strong 9, I would rather send that to BGS than PSA. Because that, that BGS 9.5 gets you a pretty good premium. Bro, I still haven't played any of the new Pokemon Snap. I'm slacking on that. I've had a busy week, and I'm going to have a really busy day tomorrow, to be honest. I've got a lot of work to do tomorrow. A uh, Malamar, Tadpole, Squovit, Sableye. Nice! Bro, this is my favorite card we pulled all night. This is my favorite card we pulled all night. I told you guys, Metagross, one of my favorite Pokemon of all time. This card is sick. Definitely getting this graded. Man, that's sick. What a sick card. We gotta put that guy in a sleeve. Man, that's a sick card. Have you opened up any of those Walgreens mystery packs, bro? I haven't been able to find one. I know people are reselling them for like $250, $500 on eBay. I wouldn't even trust that, bro. Honestly, 
I've gone to Walgreens multiple times, and every time I've gone looking for Pokemon cards, completely wiped out. Nothing even on the shelves. Yeah, bro, I honestly like the Metagross more than the Gold Electrode. Seismitoad. Coughing. Zeb Strike. I'm just going to keep calling it Zeb Strike. And a trainer. All right. I'm pretty happy with that box, I guess. Let's do a hit review here before we get to the last booster box. This beautiful, beautiful Metagross. This Metagross, which is beautiful too. This golden, shiny Electrode. Celebi V. Uh, Calyrex in the Shadow Horse. Celebi V Max. Yeah, this was a good. Was this from the first box or the second box? All three legendary birds and Galarian Slowking. Nice hit so far. A lot of these I really want to get graded. So the last box, guys. The Silver Lance. I'm trying to give you guys a full preview of what Chilling Rain is going to be like. Hey, Nick, are there any Zards in this box? I do not believe so. But that's okay. Every hunt does not need to be a Zard hunt. Although I would, I would like it to be. <laughs> Will you guys bear with me and keep the chat going if I go refill my drink real quick? My voice is getting real harsh, and I feel like I need to refill my drink like ASAP. Let me see. Let me see if Bridget's still up. I'm about to text her. I think she's asleep. I need the chat to keep going while I go get this drink. I really need to get a drink. Give me a second, guys. I promise I'll be right back if you guys all stay. All right, boys, fear not. I'm back in the room. Oh, everybody stayed. We gained two We gained two viewers. Man, I'm back in the room. Let me pee first, and we'll get started. I can't believe we gained viewers while I was gone. I appreciate you guys hanging in there. All right. All right, we're back. Man, this whole streaming thing, man, This is, I feel like this is like a workout for me. Oh, Angel, bro, I appreciate the donation. I didn't mean to miss that. Here we go, guys. I want to be the very best. Yeah, this streaming thing, bro, I feel like it's... I keep shaking this tripod, my bad. I feel like it's like a workout for me because I'm so new to streaming. Every time I do a really long stream, I feel like I'm training for the next stream. And I didn't realize we've been going for almost two hours now and I haven't had a drink for most of the stream. And I haven't peed this whole time, which is unusual for me. So I got a Trulies, crack a cold one with the boys. Hopefully you guys have a drink with you guys. Spark up for this last box. Not spark up, but I guess crack open. You guys know what I mean, same difference. Oh man, this is good. Truly lemonade. Oh, 
Okay. Stretching real quick so we can get back into this. How pathetic is that? Pokemon <laughs> opening Pokemon cards got me tired. I got up early today too. Like you guys all understand, man. I never get up early. I got up at seven again today too. This whole house, getting all this stuff done with the house has been a nightmare, an absolute nightmare. This week, the carpet has been the uh, the big thing that I've been trying to get done. So I had to meet the guys this morning that are replacing the carpet. And I was there from basically 7 in the morning to 7.40 at night. So I was there at the house basically watching these guys install the carpet for the past 12 hours. And then they didn't finish like they were supposed to. They were supposed to finish in one day. They said, can we come back tomorrow at 8 o'clock? I'm like, bro... I mean, I guess. <laughs> and then tomorrow also is a big work day for me because it's a big bodybuilding show. The New York Pro is going to be in the morning. You got the prejudging in the morning at like 10 o'clock, and then the night show is like 6 o'clock. So I guess I'll be all morning over at the house watching these guys <laughs> install carpet, and then I'm going straight to work with the uh, bodybuilding show. Shuffle the box. Yeah, man, the New York Pro. I'll shuffle the box. I'm excited for the New York Pro. I honestly am. It's been a while since we've had a really excited bodybuilding show, but one thing that I don't miss was waking up to watch pre-judging. My pre-judging videos always get more views than the night show the night show videos, so I always got to get up and make sure I try to get on the live stream and watch the pre-judging and get a pre-judging video out like around noon. Then I'll make another video that day in nighttime. I guess we'll see what happens, though. If it's anything like the Indie Pro, the live stream might not even work, which is one thing that really, really pisses me off. They, When they charge people for a live stream, bro, 20 bucks, $29.99, whatever, 50 bucks, some live streams, and it doesn't even work, and some of us were like, this is our job. We got to get up. We got to pay money to watch this, and we log into the live stream, and it doesn't even turn on. Like, bro, the Indie Pro live stream didn't even come on. Like, it didn't work at all. So that's the, that's the type of stuff I hate. I get up early, I spend money on a live stream, and I'm just sitting there and nothing happens. It's just like, dude, if you're going to promise the fans a live stream and charge them for a live stream, don't, don't skimp out on it. Like, make sure the thing works. It's the most annoying thing in the world. And it's annoying for people that are trying to cover the sport. Like, we're just trying to do our jobs. Brooke says, sorry, I haven't been active. Been sorting through thousands of cards. Oh, you're, you're sending your bulk away? I might do that tomorrow, bro. That seems like a really good deal. I see lots of fraud. Who's Matt Cass? Is that Chris? Do we have a new Chris account? Did Chris make another account? Hypno. That's a cute little guy. Is that another cast form evolution? Now more than ever, they need to get that tech stuff right. Yeah, that's a fact. When will you start selling packs, Nick? I really, I really should. It would just be so, it, it'd be such a pain shipping it all out. I'm already behind on shipping out all the, uh, like the past four giveaways, I think. I try to do it once a month for the giveaways. I'll just ship them all out at the end of the month. I just always get behind on shipping stuff. That's why I never went into uh, e-commerce. A lot of YouTubers and stuff, they'll start like clothing brands and clothing companies and supplement companies. For one, I don't have a staff that works for me, so I wouldn't have somebody that works for me to ship this stuff out. And for two, I hate shipping stuff. So that's why I never really got into the e-commerce clothing line type of stuff. Cause I just, that's just not my thing. I do not enjoy shipping and packing and Angel Mendez with another $5 random thought. Since I've been following you, I want to, since I want to say 2012, I joined the army, found your bodybuilding channel. Kind of rad, bro. That's sweet. I appreciate your service, bro. Are you still serving? My other friend, Grant, who was there for the opening the other night, he uh, 
He served for four years in the uh, army. Please make Nick Strength and Pokemon merch. Yeah, Bridget keeps saying I need to make some Pokemon shirts, like some buff, a buff Charmander or something. Oh yeah, cast form is the weather Pokemon. That's right, sunny, rainy, and icy. Normal, sunny, yeah, that's right. Was that a Diamond and Pearl Generation Pokemon? Nick, we have to get you memberships for custom emojis for your channel. That would be sick. I think I'm eligible for it. I just need to figure out how to do it. Zeus says, night, bro. Oh, you're going to bed, Zeus? Wait, who's going to bed? Oh, Shane's going to bed. Okay. I got behind on the chat. Okay, Shane, I'm going to bed, Nick. Looking forward to seeing the results of New York Pro. Thanks, bro. I love you, too. Good night. Sleep tight. And you can definitely count on the New York Pro coverage when you wake up tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to be a long day for me, but it will be fun. And a Santa Conda. Eric Dunes, what are the hits so far? My bad. I'd be on, then I get off. Hold on, bro. I got you. Where'd I put those hits? Here we go. We've actually had some pretty good stuff. We got all three legendary birds. Galarian Slowking. Beautiful Celebi VMAX. Beautiful, beautiful Celebi VMAX. The Calyrex riding the Shadow Horse or whatever the horse's name is. Another Celebi. This card right here, which is pretty sick. A gold shiny electrode. I mean, that's it is pretty cool. Metagross and Metagross VMAX. Cast form was uh, Ruby Sapphire. Man, that makes me, just hearing those names makes me want to get my Game Boy out and play Ruby Sapphire. I want to beat Team Magma again, bro. What do you think about Yu-Gi-Oh cards? Are they worth collecting? I see the value of cards aren't as high as Pokemon. There's not as much of a collector's market for Yu-Gi-Oh. There is a little bit of one. But I feel like Yu-Gi-Oh, the market for Yu-Gi-Oh is ma the majority are people that play the TCG. Whereas with Pokemon, I feel like the majority of the market for Pokemon is collectors, and the minority are the people that play the Pokemon TCG. But Yu-Gi-Oh, I think, is the, the inverse of that. Yu-Gi-Oh, it seems like the fan base and, and the, main, uh, the majority of people buying cards are building decks and playing the game, whereas Pokemon's the reverse. Yeah, Konami, they made some interesting decisions with Yu-Gi-Oh. I can't keep up with Yu-Gi-Oh at all. The XYZ summoning and all that stuff, bro, I'm completely lost on all that. And another Santa Conda, bro, are you kidding me? Probably one of the least desirable V cards that you could get out of here. Fart, <laughs> Fart McCass. What's up, Nick? What's up, bro? I've been playing Pokemon Red, Red and Blue and sometimes Crystal. I might have my Game Boy sitting over here somewhere. When I went down to get that drink, I should have got my box full of Charizards that I'm about to send to BGS. I wanted to show you guys all these Zards. Give me a second here. I'm going to show you guys. I think my Game Boy's sitting right here. All right. I don't even know what's in it, to be honest. We got the old Game Boy Advance SP, and we got... Does it start up? Let's see if it starts up. Oh, yeah. How satisfying is that? What's in here? Metroid? Oh, yeah. Metroid Fusion, baby. That OG. How about that? How about that? Santa Conda don't want none. Unless you got buns, hun. Nothing like the sound of a Game Boy starting up. Hypno, Porygon, Hippowdon, 
another form of cast form, and some chick. Man, this has been a long stream so far. So it looks like Chris is officially gone. Did Chris get hidden from the channel? Or did Chris just get timed out? Or is Chris just officially checked out? Backpack Agron. Every time I hear that name, it's all I can think of. Y'all remember I have, the, I have to wire trade Pokemon on the Game Boy? Why is the back different? They're Japanese. Oh, nice. Galarian Slowking, not the full art version. Let's leave that bad boy up. Do you think Barnes & Noble will stop selling Pokemon 2? Absolutely, I do. Because here's what's going to happen. Target and Walmart stop selling Pokemon. Any other place that people know that sold Pokemon that they would previously go to Target or Walmart before they would go there, they're all going to go to those places. And all these same problems that Target and Walmart had are going to carry over to any place that carries over that carries Pokemon, especially the smaller places. If you get a small crowded store like GameStop, a small crowded aisle like Barnes and Noble with very, very, very limited Pokemon product, the demand's going to be even higher there and the supply is going to be even lower. So the problems are probably going to be worse and they're going to come to the same conclusion and just stop carrying it. I don't think it's the first or last time with Chris. So, Jay, if you were born in 87, how old does that make you? Does it make you 33? Bro, I think especially GameStop. GameStop is well known for having Pokemon cards. And think about how small the inside of a GameStop is. How small the section where the cards are. If everybody starts going to GameStop to get Pokemon product in person for retail prices, bro, it's going to be a problem. It's too small of a space, bro. Greg B. Pierre, 34. Elon Muck is 33. How old is everybody else? I'm 28 now. I keep saying I'm 27, but I just turned 28. Which I guess, I guess I'm not too young. I'm getting close to 30 myself. And what is this? A glace? Is it a glacy uh, frost lass? Frost lass. Pokey Sly is 34. Pajamisto is 27. Dan the Man is 28. Team Rocket Rob, I thought you said you were 86. I thought you were saying you're 86 years old, I mean. I was like, bro, shout out to Team Rocket Rob at 86 years old checking in on the Pokemon streams at 1 a.m. That's my guy right there, Team Rocket Rob. Elon Muck is the dirty 30. I oh, know you were, wait, what did he say he was? Now I'm getting confused. I thought he said something else before. I feel like it. Nick, you should switch out the SP case. I just switched mine out to a glow in the dark. Yeah, I need to get I need to get one of those new juiced up uh Game Boys on steroids with the crazy bright screens and stuff, because these screens are kind of crap. It's like the biggest thing that's lagging in the gameplay experience with these old with these old Game Boys is the screen brightness just sucks. Like, why would you play an older console like the Game Boy with a crappy screen like that that you can barely see when you can play almost anything else that you can see better? But, the dude, the battery life on this is insane. I mean, even though I haven't played it much and I haven't turned it on, this has been sitting in my drawer in my office since I've had this townhouse. So it's been here since 20, 2018 just sitting off of one charge and it still turns on. Like I charged it when I first moved here and I put it in my drawer after that 
and I haven't charged it since, and it's still good. Like, have you sold your Doge yet, Nick, or are you still holding? What's it at right now? Let me check. She's not doing too bad. She's still... I'm still holding, baby. I'm holding 99,000 Doge coins, boys. If it gets to a dollar, we'll make a nice little hundred grand in Dogecoin. That'd be fun. I'm going to plug in this phone since I'm using this as the Wi-Fi hotspot. <laughs> I'll switch back and forth. Team Rocket Rob is 34, but four kids make you feel hella older. Yeah, bro, I bet. How old are your kids? I mean, I'm 28, and I don't think I would be ready for a kid yet. So by the time I'm 34, if I had a kid now, they'd be six. If you, bro, if you had four kids, man. What is this? I can't even see that that well. What is going Oh, this is that, uh, that big icebergs uh, pre-evolution. Nick, at what point did you hop in on the Dogecoin train? I first got in at two cents sometime around early January, and I kept going in and out and in and out and kept getting scared and kept selling, and then I finally made the decision to start buying and holding, and that's been the biggest payoff of anything that I've done with Doge. If only I had held when I bought in at two cents. 31 with no kids and one dog. What about Chris? Chris is the same age as me. Um, he's 28. He has no kids personally, but he's dating somebody with kids. I don't really want to, I don't want to put her business out there, but she's got a couple kids. So if they got married, I guess they would technically become like his stepchildren. Chris is actually a month older than me, even though he doesn't act like it. 12, 8, and 7, and one about to be 2, 12. So you had a kid when you were 22. You see that quick math that I just did? <laughs> Man, I could not imagine having a kid at 22. Respect to you, bro. For a second, I thought you were going to say Chris doesn't have a kid, but he is a kid. That's also true. But actually, Chris does, uh, I will give Chris credit. He messes around online, and he acts like a clown sometimes. Um, he takes really good care of that girl that he's dating, and he takes really good care of her kids, even though they're not his. And he, he's only been with her like a couple years. But Chris, honestly, I, I feel like he really stepped up to the plate in that relationship um, and that was his first relationship ever. He was a virgin before that relationship. So um, I feel like he really stepped up to the bat for that. So I, I do need to give Chris credit. Even if he acts immature in the Pokemon streams, I think he's he's kind of stepped up in some regards. I had to blow my nose for a second. I was getting teary-eyed talking about Chris. I'm just kidding. But yeah, Chris, at the end of the day, he's a good dude. He just, uh, he is immature sometimes. He's got a good heart, though. Any man that takes care of someone else's kids deserves all the credit in the world, bro. That's a fact. Because I'm telling you, I couldn't do it. I know for a fact I couldn't do it. Had to throw the virgin bomb. <laughs> I mean, it's a good point to make about the virgin thing because, I mean, if you think about it, if you're a virgin in your, in your mid-20s or whatever Chris was when he started dating this girl, you go from being a virgin... Never having a girlfriend. He never had a girlfriend throughout high school or college. Imagine that. You go from being a virgin, never having a girlfriend, to immediately dating a girl with kids and taking care of her kids. I mean, 
that's a pretty big shift in responsibility from what you're used to. And I feel like Chris did, uh, he adjusted accordingly. <laughs> Had to throw on that, bur that virgin bomb though. Too many guys are closed minded to being with women. Let's get, it's I agree, bro. I'm definitely one of those guys. One of my first thoughts is, man, that sounds like that sounds like a lot of stress. Relationships in general, especially at our age, us millennials, in the era of dating apps and all that good stuff, relationships in general are stressful. Add a kid to that, add a baby daddy to that. I mean, it just makes the equation a lot more messy. What is this little guy's name? I almost said rufflet. I feel like it's rough something. Straight up lion. Pour a gun. And just some straight up trees and snow. That's original. Wait, Japanese packs only have five cards. Rock rough. So I was close. I thought it was rough something. <laughs> Rowlet. <laughs> Bro, it's been tough, but I've been a bus driver since then, and y'all, it's great money, but man, the shit I deal with at work make it easy to rise my kids. Yeah, I can imagine. My grandpa was actually a bus driver for a little bit. I think he quit right around the era of cell phones, though, right around the social media era. So he kind of, he must have got out right before it got really bad. I couldn't imagine working with any type of kids in a public school setting or in a school bus setting with the social media era, the world star filming fights and all the drama. And I mean, it, I, dude, I couldn't even imagine what it would be like to be in high school right now. When I was in high school, the only thing that existed was Facebook. We had shitty flip phones and we had Facebook. Some people had MySpace if they were a little bit older. But Facebook came out in 2008. I was a freshman in 2007. So we didn't have we didn't have Snapchat, we didn't have Instagram, we didn't have Twitter yet. I guess we did have YouTube, but no one none of us had a YouTube channel back then. And none of us were like as active as people are now on YouTube. YouTube was a lot different back around 2007, 2008 than what it is now. Oh, Nick Price. He says, what's up, Nick? Yeah, bro, sorry you missed most of the stream. I just saw your comment. I'll go over the hits at the end of this. We're not too deep into this box yet. This is the third and final booster box. Man, we've been going for over two hours, haven't we? Another straight up trees in the woods. I see another hit in this pack. I feel like we're getting a lot more hit packs out of this. Another Cinderace. I don't know why I said another. I was confusing that with the Blaziken that we got out of the first one. Y'all definitely have to rewatch with some cheeky beverages. My man, I'm drinking a truly, a truly lemon tea right now. So not the most manly or the most cheeky beverage, I guess. Kmart was bonkers. Hey, Nick, what do you think about the three... The three bird art individually, I love them. There's not a card with all three on there, is there? Is there a card with all three Galarian legendary birds? Because if there is, I will go on eBay right now and buy it. But individually, I love the Galarian legendary birds. I really, really like the uh, the approach they took to those artworks, man. I really like it. I know some people. Some people were really like upset. They didn't like the designs at all. I'm a huge Huge fan of the artwork of the legendary birds. The Galer I just think they're so... I mean, bro. The psychic, like, cyborg Articuno thing that they got going on. Love it. Maltrace. Uh, I think it's a big improvement over the original Maltrace. And, bro, a Roadrunner Zapdos? It just makes so much sense. I love it. No, I mean all three independently. Yeah, bro. All three independently, I love them. 
I love it. I mean, you get kind of worried when you hear something like they're going to reimagine like the most iconic, some of the most iconic legendary Pokemon from your childhood. They're going to redesign them. You get kind of worried they're going to ruin them because typically the sequel always sucks to everything. I like it a lot. I was really happy with the design. What's the most you've dropped on one card? Not a lot. I don't buy single cards, really. I drop a lot of money on booster boxes, mostly chasing Charizards out of Evolutions, so I guess that. I most, I've most i mostly been grading all my own cards, and I haven't really been buying anything expensive or graded. I just... I think grading my own cards has been the most fun so far. Nick Price with a dollar forty nine Glizzy, and what's this one called? Porygon two. Wait, what is this? This is an evolution past the evolution of Porygon. That thing is ugly. Actually, I'll show you guys. Hold on, I'm staying in the same room. I'm not leaving. I just want to show you guys these PSA cards that I've got. I'll show you guys some stuff real quick. I think you guys might like some of this. If I can get this case open, let's see. I think you guys might enjoy this. Let's see. So my collection is really pretty weak. Um, most of what I've got is all being graded right now or stuff that I'm about. Oh, we just talked about the eBay scammer too, Nick. You missed that? Bro, I'll, let me get back to that in a second. Let me, let me try to stay with my point for a second here. So I don't really collect PSA graded cards. I don't buy them. I don't like seek them on eBay. But I do really enjoy sending cards to get graded. I think it's like kind of fun to chase that grade. So these are the only cards that I've bought. Like I've went on eBay and searched for this card graded by PSA because I wanted it so bad. So there's only a handful of them. So these guys right here, the Japanese promo Charizard from the CD-ROM in a PSA 10. I love, love love the artwork on this card. The Pokemon Red Game Boy game artwork is what this Charizard is. I love this card. I, like, I cannot get enough of this card. So this was one of the very few cards that I searched up in a PSA 10, and I bought it in a PSA 10. And I loved it so much, I bought two of them. I had to have this card. Like, this artwork to me... I almost like it better than the base set Charizard artwork. Like, I love this artwork. It's so, it's just so good. This is like OG, OG Charizard. I love this card. So that's <laughs> like these three cards, like my whole PSA collection that I bought. A random PSA 9 Mewtwo, just because this was one of my favorite cards as a kid. This was the card that I wanted to get going to the movies. Like every time you got the movie pack going to the original movie, this was the only card I wanted. So I ended up randomly buying that in a nine. The only other PSA card I've bought is a PSA 10 uh, Toys R Us Charmander promo. So then I've got these uh, these Beckett cards, these BCCG cards. Uh, Beckett 10 Thousand Dragon. A Beckett 10 Gate Guardian and a Beckett 10 Unlimited Legend of Blue Eyes White Dragon, Blue Eyes White Dragon. So that's my whole graded card collection. Like I said, most of my cards right now are currently being graded. They're not graded yet, and I'm waiting to get them back. So my graded card collection is just going to be whatever I get back. So anyway, that was a long answer to a short question. <clears throat> Did you know the original design of Charizard only had one horn and a lot of the vintage cards feature the one horn Zard? Wait a minute. Did that Charizard I just showed have one horn? I guess you don't... I guess you can't really see a second one. And definitely, if you look at uh, Charmeleon, Charmeleon only has one horn, so I guess that makes sense, right? I don't know, dude. I just, 
I don't know if you guys agree with me or not, but I love this card. I mean, it's just... Every time I look at these... See, this is what I think grading, getting a graded card or buying a graded card should be all about. It's like every time you look at it, you're just like, man, I love this card. Every time I look at this card, I love it. I just love this card. It's just so sick. And I accidentally bought two of them too. So the seller... Uh, the seller had multiple of these for sale. They actually look kind of, the labels look very different. This one looks a lot darker. The seller had two for sale, and I accidentally put a uh, best offer for a quantity of two instead of one. And he accepted it, so I just bought both of them. But man, I love it. These are like two cards that I probably won't uh, ever sell. What's it worth? At the time, they were going up in price. I paid six hundred a piece, and this was this was the week of Logan Paul's live stream. So this was like the earliest on in my Pokemon collecting. This was like right when Logan Paul was starting that whole thing. So this was like in October that I bought these, and I think I paid six hundred each, and I think they've gone up significantly in price. So let me let me look right now. PSA ten, nineteen ninety eight, Japanese Charizard. CD promo. Let's see. PSA 10, Japanese Charizard. Oh, it looks like they've gone down a little bit. It might be time to buy. 800 bucks, 900 bucks, 900 bucks. They've gone down. I would buy I would buy one right now if I were you. Um, when Pokemon was at its peak, I looked these up again, and they were going for two thousand fifteen hundred. They were going for like two thousand bucks, fifteen hundred bucks. But yeah, I'm I'll probably never sell these cards. I love these cards. Some of my favorite artworks of all time in those cards. But yeah, let's get back to these packs. <laughs> But most of my collection, my, my graded collection, is going to be heavily Charizard-focused. I've got some base set Charizards being graded. I've got, I've got a base set 2 Charizard be a, being graded, base set unlimited, um, a legendary collection, non holozard a crap load of evolution Zard. So when everything is said and done, I'm going to have a ton of slabbed-up OG artwork Zards, and it's going to be it's going to be sick. Card market is in a slump. Yeah, man, that's what I'm thinking, too. When the 25th anniversary set comes out, the hype's going to be real. Unless the Pokemon company plays their cards all wrong. Deathly Hollows Master, bro, thank you for stopping by. I appreciate you. I hope you have a great night. I hope you sleep well. I'm going to have to take some melatonin before I go to bed. I'm not tired at all. Lap Whoa, we got a little trainer in the background of that Lapras card. Nice. Very nice. We got the cover card of this set. Just like we did last time. Very nice. I might have to start opening up more Japanese cards on this channel. This is actually... These are pretty enjoyable to open. Aside from forgetting the names of half the cards. Hey, Nick, what's your favorite card of the three birds? Mine is Zapdos. Well, mine is Zapdos too, bro. I know it sounds stupid and I know it sounds weird, but that Roadrunner, uh, that Roadrunner visualization of Zapdos, it just, it just really does it for me. I just really like, I just, I just like the way they imagine it. I think it's such a good, the imagery there is just so good. I think it's perfect for Zapdos. I think it just it just makes so much sense. I think uh, Articuno would be a close runner up to that though. I think the Articuno looks really sick too. Just got a weird idea about how Logan Paul could have had a, had a pump and dump and made millions. I don't know if he would have done that, man. I mean, he seems like he would have been. I think he was legitimately interested in Pokemon as a hobby. 
I don't think he's that desperate for money that he would need to do something like that and then risk public uh, perception of him shifting in that way if he did do a Pokemon pump and dump. Bro, so many more people would turn on him and hate him. Rather, I mean, I don't know, man. I feel like he picked up a whole new fan base, a whole new demographic of fans from the Pokemon thing, and I feel like he embraced that fan base, and I feel like the biggest mistake in the world would be for him to just be using the Pokemon thing as some kind of pump and dump to make money, because I think I think he's got plenty of money at the end of the day, but he, I think he could always use more fans. Some Japanese Evos. Dude, I should get some more Japanese Evos. That CP6 was... That was fun to open. But it's it's so expensive. I wonder if that dip in price... If you guys don't mind, if someone could go check eBay right now, what is the uh, CP6 booster box going for? Everyone's talking about how Evolution's boxes are dipping in price. Last I checked, CP6 boxes were going for like 2000 bucks. I lucked out and I got mine for like sixteen hundred. That one that we opened on the channel, but they're expensive. They're like double the price of Evolutions. And we got another hitter in this pack: Backpack, Ralts, Hippo, Agron, and a Tornadus. I think I would, but I'm making food and using my phone right now. It's all good, bro. Anyone that has time. Nothing urgent. I would be curious to know what they're going for, though. I would love to get another one for the channel, but they're, they're they're so expensive. Open a pack normally, just one. I'll see if I can do it. Do you ever watch Seth Everman's channel? He does goofy music, and you should check out his last video. He papered his entire wall with fat Pikachu cards. I've never heard of him. I'll have to check him out. They're going for about a thousand right now. That's a lot cheaper than they were going for. I'll see them sell for anywhere from two thousand to twenty five hundred. Man, that's so crazy how Pokemon prices have just completely. I mean, there's no question about it. the The whole market is down. What's with the Steam Siege comments? Isn't Steam Siege, like, universally accepted to be one of the worst sets of all time? If there's one for $1,000, bro, I will, I'll buy it right now. I'll buy it on the stream. Nah, bro, you guys are trolling. Hold on, bro. <clears throat> if we can find one for a thousand, I'll buy it on the stream for the channel right now. Although I don't want my uh, my PayPal to accidentally pop up and show my address and stuff would be the only thing. Nick, do you listen to J. Cole? I did listen to the new stuff that just came out. Oh, it's an auction. I'll place a bid on one. That won't show my address. CP6 booster box. This one? Yeah, oh, that good deal made me sneeze. I guess I'm allergic to deals. I'll go as high as fifteen hundred on that bad boy. There we go. I'll st I'll stay true to my word on that one. Bless you, thank you, bro. I'm gonna blow my nose real quick. I don't know where that came from.
The sneeze came out of nowhere. Ah. Oh. Man, I appreciate you guys, man. I love you guys. I love hanging out with you guys. It's almost two in the morning here. We're just opening Pokemon cards with the boys. Uh, who you calling to win tomorrow's show? Nick Walker is looking dangerous. It's a tough call, man. Honestly, if I'm being completely honest, I really thought Hassan was going to win. I thought Hassan was going to be the guy that was going to come in here and completely clean house. But some of the recent updates I've seen from Hassan, if I'm being completely honest, I don't think his conditioning is going to be where it needs to be. I want to be I want to be optimistic and look at those updates and say maybe they're old, maybe he I don't know. Maybe that's not how he's going to look and maybe he's going to look good on stage, but honestly, the recent updates of Hassan I think his conditioning is not where it needs to be. I think Justin is probably going to be realistically the front runner to win this show. I still think Nick is going to be I think Nick is going to be in the conversation for second. Who knows? Nick could come in and win the show. I didn't want to be too hard on Hassan because I really that really was my prediction. I really thought that Hassan had it in the bag. Like when he first announced he was doing the, uh, here, I'll show you a picture. And this is why I thought Hassan was going to win. I'll show you a picture of Hassan when he announced that he was doing the show. So he announced it at like eight or nine weeks out from the show. So let's see, this was... So this was seven weeks ago. This is what he looked like seven weeks ago. He almost looks like he's in better shape in this picture than he looks now. So I thought, man, Hassan's got all this muscle. He's a freak. Hassan, he's like a little big Rami. This guy is stacked. If you haven't seen Hassan in person, you might not understand how big this guy really is. He's probably about Flex Lewis's height. He's probably about 5'5 five, five or so. And I would say at 5'5", five, five, he's got to be he's got to be in the 260s. This guy's huge. Um, but this was seven weeks ago. So I saw, here's this mass monster. He's had some really high placings in the past. He's doing the New York Pro. He looks crazy at seven weeks out. He was my pick to win. He looks worse now than he looked in this picture. I don't know what happened with Hassan. He's still got a chance. I mean, he could, I don't know, maybe he could pull some last-minute diuretics or something. Zarud. Some kind of last-minute diuretics or some kind of last-minute whatever to change the way he's looking. But honestly, I think based on some of the updates that we've seen from Hassan lately, I don't think it's looking too good for him. Nick, is it possible to get a license to stream the show on your main channel? It is. Um... They, they wouldn't let me do that, though. I've been in conversations about doing that for the Olympia in years past. I've also had conversations about the Arnold Classic. Um, but the people running the New York Pro, definitely not. There are certain people in the IFBB that absolutely hate me just because I'm successful in this space. And like a lot of these shows, what people don't realize is a lot of these shows, they might only have a couple hundred people attend the show. And if they don't have a live stream, all the money they're making is from people buying tickets times a couple hundred. Like the IFBB, if you look at it in the grand scheme of things, these promoters, they don't make a lot of money. These shows, like the New York Pro, Everybody's talking about it. There might be some good sponsors that might pay. For example, I sponsored the Indy Pro two years in a row. It cost me like $500 to $1,000 to be like a title sponsor of that show. So a show might have 10, 20 sponsors at $1,000 a sponsor. They might make 10, 20 grand off sponsors, but then they got to pay athletes. They got to rent the venue, the prize money, the trophies, the judges need to get paid. 
I mean, the IFBB is not that big of a business. So when they see somebody like me making money off my YouTube channel like I'm making, it's like I found a way to beat the system and they're still doing it this old school way where they're not making a whole lot of money. So there's a lot of people in the IFBB that just, they straight up hate me because they're promoting these shows and not making any money. It's a whole, it's a whole complicated system. Do you reckon that attitude they have is just jealousy or a bit of bodybuilding ego? I think it's probably both. I'm not too worried about it. I mean, people send me something like once a month. There's yeah, there's like all kinds of random, like random small YouTubers that I've never heard of that are like, that have a problem with me. And the only thing that I can think of is like, they're just jealous. They're trying to do the same thing that I'm doing and they're making whatever video, talking whatever crap about me. I don't even want, I never watched the videos because I could care less. But it's always some YouTuber with like less than 20,000 subscribers. And the only thing I can think of is they're trying to do exactly what I'm doing, but they're not succeeding at it. So that they randomly throw my name into a video and say something negative. I could care less though. One thing that I've learned is that if you want to be uh, if you want to be at the top when it comes to social media and you want to have a big YouTube following or a big Instagram following or whatever it might be, you've got to accept what comes with that territory. And what comes with that territory is a lot of people are not going to like what you do. You can't please everybody. So you've got to learn to kind of shrug it off. It doesn't matter what kind of content you make. Dude, we need more plates and more dates and NSP to go. That would be cool. They just using your names for clicks. Got to head out. Thanks for stopping by, Canto Kitchen. You're chilling, bro. You legit. People going to hate when you're on the top. You definitely built some thick skin over the years. I mean, the only thing you can do is ignore it. I'll tell you one thing. Nothing gets under a hater's skin more than you not responding. It drives them absolutely crazy because... If you look at some of the stuff like with Greg Doucette, Greg always responds to the people that call him out. And that's exactly what the people that call him out want. Why are they calling you out? Why are they making a video? They want you to see it. They want it to affect you. They want you to respond. But when you don't respond and you don't say anything and you don't address it at all, it makes them just question, am I just so insignificant that he just doesn't, he didn't even see it? He doesn't even care? Why did he not respond? You not responding is the most powerful thing you can do to anybody that says anything negative about you. So if any of you guys are trying to build a following or start a YouTube channel, that's the best advice I can give any of you guys is once you start to get really big, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. People will always want to tell you how to do your job. They always think they can do it better than you. They always got a problem with the way you do things. But the best thing you can do is ignore it entirely, and it drives them crazy. Another one. <laughs> Greg is hypercritical off the bat to begin with. I don't, really, I don't really watch a lot of his channel, to be honest. I don't have a problem with the guy. I think he's entertaining. I think his voice is hilarious. I think he's entertaining, and I think he, gives, uh, he does give some really good information. But I think one thing that might lead to his downfall is he does reply to every single criticism that he gets, which I, I don't think is a good, uh, I just don't think it's, I don't think it's productive. Yeah, Greg usually makes really valid points and really good arguments, but I just really think responding to every criticism is not, you're just shining more light on it. Half the time, it's not a good criticism. Like some of the stuff that I see with Greg, a lot of the criticism that he gets, some of it is like decent, like warranted criticism, but other people just calling Greg out for random stuff that's not true or whatever, him responding to it is only shining a bigger light on it that otherwise nobody would care. So when someone with like a couple thousand subscribers is talking crap about you, if you respond and you've got a million subscribers, all you're going to do is 
give more attention to the guy that he otherwise would never get. So I just never respond. Good night, Brooks. It was good to have you stop by, bro. Truth, Nick, as a public figure, your attention is the most valuable thing you can give. 100%. And I, I honestly, I have this theory that most people that hate on you, and I think, I think this is true, especially in my case, because a lot of the people that seem to, uh, when I get sent a negative video about me, it's always from a channel that's trying to do exactly what I'm doing. It's always another bodybuilding like news channel. I think deep down, the people that make these videos are like, they're your biggest fan. They watch every video. They don't miss a single upload. They might dislike them all, but they watch everything you do. And they talk about you all the time. And all they want is they want you to respond. They just want your attention. I, th I just have this theory that most of your biggest haters are actually your biggest fans. And I think what you'll find is if you run into this problem and you ignore them, it just goes away. People that have problems with people hating on them, it's when, there's this, there's this classic saying, don't feed the trolls. I never feed the trolls, and I never have issues with them. If you have a troll, and you constantly address them in videos, you respond to all their comments, you make videos about them, and you constantly talk about it, it makes the problem into a much bigger issue. If you just ignore it, it just, it's nothing. It goes away, they're nothing. Scott Herman Fitness. What do you mean? He, he has beef with like the people that troll him? Oh, nice. Another San our third Santa Conda, but it's a V Max. That's kind of that's actually kind of sick looking. I used to watch Scott back in the day. We all watch Scott Herman, bro. He's like the OG. Don't stir the pot. So true. If you ignore them, they'll leave and give up. Do the IFBB cards. Where'd you get them? I got them on eBay. Oh, the gold Chris Bumstead. I got those from Big Three Media on Instagram. Yeah, I don't watch. Uh, I don't watch Scott Herman anymore. I don't know what kind of stuff he's up to now. But yeah, I don't know if any of you guys watching are starting your own YouTube channels or trying to grow a following and bodybuilding or whatever that's the best advice i can give you you can make the most positive neutral content in the world if you start to get big there's going to be someone that's mad that you're bigger than them and at the end of the day that's enough for them to hate you He's into crypto now. <laughs> Everybody's into crypto, bro. Scott does seem like the perfect, uh, the crypto bro, like the meme of it. Hey, Nick, do you have any of the base set shadowless? I don't have any, actually. I don't have any base set or shadowless. I do have two sealed starter decks, theme decks, from the shadowless era that I've never opened. So I guess there's some shadowless cards in there, but I, I've never taken them out. We got some, we got a last pack here and we get some last pack magic. And again, guys, tomorrow night, we will do the regularly scheduled Evo's box. I just got to get it from the other house. All right, let's see what we can get out of this last pack. I feel like we had some good discussions tonight, some good conversations. I'm happy to have you guys here hanging out. How are your PSA submissions looking? Did you submit all bulk? Um, I have four ex or ooh, we got something good here. Let me answer your question before I get to this pack. It looks like we're gonna have some last pack magic though. It looks like it might even be a gold card. I need a lot of fire in the chat, but to answer your question, I believe I have four bulk submissions currently with PSA and one express. The express is still in the grading process. 
and it's not it has not moved at all. It's been there since early April. No, the Express has been there forever. The Express has been there since January. What am I talking about? The Express has been there since January, but I think they only entered it into their system in April. So it's like, I don't know, it's taking forever. Hypno. Layron, I believe. Uh, Shuppet, I want to say. Uh, what's this guy's name? I forget, but what do we... Snover, I think. Nice. Interesting. It is gold. A gold water energy. That wet, wet. That super soaker. Can I get some water in the chat? Can I get some squirt emojis in the chat? Let me see it drip. Lube up that chat, boys and girls. It's a pretty cool looking card. Gold energy. Bro, thanks for being such a nice guy. Always with your fans while you're going like hell. Thank you, bro. I really appreciate that. Argentinian bodybuilder. I appreciate that. Thank you for subscribing to my channel, bro. I appreciate your support. All that water in the chat, boys. Soak it up. Soak it up. <laughs> All right, guys. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys so much. Dude, I love this community. This was a fun night. We've been going for almost three hours now. I hope to see all of you back here tomorrow on the Evo stream. We're going to hunt for some Charizards again. It's always a good time for a Charizard hunt. But thank you guys for hanging out with me. I hope to hang out with you guys many, many, many more nights. Have some great conversations. Hit that thumbs up button on your way out. Hit that subscribe if you haven't already. I love you guys. We'll do the giveaway tomorrow too. So don't, don't miss that. Love you guys.